guys, Polly and Taylor here today, and we are doing another interview. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Demi. She had her inner or her um, gastrectomy several years ago and has since had babies, lived a long, healthy life, and we're excited to hear about her journey. We just tried to invite her. Oh, here she is. Perfect. Hi, Hi Demi. Sorry, I've never done a live before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. I know it's not really the smoothest thing. It's we not. Tried, we've tried other platforms, but we can't seem to find one that's easier. So this. Oh. Is <laughs> and sometimes I don't know if it happens on your end, but sometimes our on our end when we start talking over you, your voice cuts off. So we apologize okay. if we ask you to repeat yourself. That's okay. Okay. Well, hi. Nice to meet hi. you. Nice to meet you. Finally. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you live currently? Um, I live in Layton, Utah. So oh, it's like oh. northern Utah. Right. For okay. About maybe 30 minutes less than that to Salt Lake City. Okay. So. Awesome. Very We have cool. an aunt that lives in uh, Salt, Salt Lake, Lake and a cousin yeah. that goes to the U of U. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We love it there. It's yeah. Probably it's probably getting not... cold too, I bet. Yeah, it's cold. It's a little bit more sunny, so it's not as not as cold, but it's pretty chilly in the morning for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're so excited to talk up to you. Um, I feel like this is going to be a great interview, especially yeah. for the women out there who are nervous about having gastrectomy because you. I'm sort of jumping ahead a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you successfully had three children after your gastrectomy. So yeah. This is just going to be really great for the women out there who are. Yeah you know not wanting to do it because of that so yeah so thank so you I, for sharing with us yeah i think it would be a good to go kind of go back to the the beginning and i don't remember or recall how many years ago that mm -hmm. was but um how did you find that you carry this genetic mutation the cdh1 uh so my dad uh he passed away from stomach cancer stage four uh at 27 uh 20 <gasps> in night i think it was like 98. Um, and I was only four at the time. And my younger sister was only uh, a year and a half or a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lived in Germany. And my mama also had two other two older my two older sisters as well. So she had four kids at 27. And we were in Germany. And she had to fly back um, to the states with my dad sick and all four of us <laughs> by oh herself gosh. yeah and they uh so that he lost a lot of weight and uh they they went to do like i think a a total gastrectomy and they opened him up and just saw that it was everywhere and couldn't save him so yeah so my mom uh sent back was sent back with the military and all that stuff cuz he was in the air force um and then Fast forward, uh, like, 14 years later, I think it was, um, and my uncle, his only sibling and brother, he had um, found out that he had cancer. I can't remember exactly what kind. I know he did have stomach cancer, but he also had, I think it went everywhere else as well. And uh, so he got tested for CDH1, and okay. he came positive um and so I was 18 at the time and my sister was 15 mm -hmm. and then so we got tested while he was sick um and then I came back positive and my sister was negative oh. and then uh he passed away uh August of 2013 and then I had my total gastrectomy in November so, so how long how long was that from the time that he found out he had cancer to him passing? What was that? Time? Um I want to say about a year oh, if wow. I right cuz I got tested for the gene I think the year before mm -hmm. and I found out in April like April of 2013 around like my birthday. Right. And, uh and then yeah that that end of the year I oh, had, wow. yeah, and we, well, they, I mean, for him to have even known to be tested for a mutation you know, that many years well. ago, I, that's pretty impressive that his doctors pointed it. Yeah, that I think that it was all the doctors and they, uh, yeah, 
a genetic cancer, um, maybe because my my dad had it and then he had it. So they kind of were like, hey, you might want to get ch tested for this. I wasn't, I'm not sure like the whole process, but uh, yeah. Uh, so it was pretty Wow, sure. that's so oh, devastating. Your yeah. grandma and your grandpa. And having yeah. Their, and when you look back at your family tree, were there, were, were your other family members able, able to see that you had other um, no. stomach cancers? No. no. Yeah, we, uh, my dad was really the only one, uh, other than that. Yeah. It's just him and my uncle. So it's, it's just kind of weird. They don't, my grandma's negative for the gene and my grandpa, he's stubborn and won't go get tested. But, right. uh, so they don't know if it was like something that happened during like conception, maybe, um, right. which some of the genetic counselors talked to us about that. Right, they call it de novo. So you're the first person to have the mutation. Really, I yeah. didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. Yeah, I wish my grandpa would get tested so we could figure it out. But right. Um, yeah. So. So you were so you were young when you tested yeah. positive, but you had yeah. seen. Well, you knew that your father had passed, and then your uncle passed. Was it an obvious, like, easy decision for you to go forward well, with the gastrectomy? <laughs> Yes and no. Um, I was pretty like, I was pretty scared, obviously. <laughs> it's pretty, yeah. a pretty crazy and big decision to, um, I mean, like, like young age. Yeah. later, right. life is pretty normal, um, which is great. But when I was going into it, yeah, I was like, I am so scared. I don't want it to be right. totally life changing. But my mom actually was like, mother intuition was like I just have a feeling you should go and then uh the doctors were like yeah well since your dad was you know 27 and your uncle's 40 then maybe we could wait till you're like 25 or 26 and mm -hmm. I'm 27 or yeah 27 now mm -hmm. I'll be 28 in April but um yeah so my mom was just like I think you should just do it and then they uh after well and there wasn't a lot of information uh 10 years ago about it yeah yeah no not really and they like the we fought the insurance too because they were like why would she want this surgery she's you know like it's a weight loss surgery and my mom's like she's 100 pounds like she doesn't want the surgery she needs it <laughs> yeah but yeah my uh, pathology results did come back as uh, stage one cancer at 18. Oh, wow so, okay yeah. It was like it was a pretty, time bomb, pretty much. Yeah, pretty eye-opening because within six months, who knows, it could have been stage right. four. Right, you just never know. You never oh. know what's going to trigger those cells yeah. to, to fester. Yeah. It, so where where did you have your surgery? Um, I had it at uh, the Huntsman Cancer Institute in Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they also are partnered with like the U of U, um, University of Utah Hospital. So. And had they done prior gastrectomies before your surgery? Um, I I don't know. I didn't yeah. ask. I I mean, maybe my mom did. Uh, I don't really remember like a lot of it. Like it was, I don't know. I feel like it was just so much to take right. on. It was like yeah. overwhelmed. Kind of just makes it a blur in the history. Right? Do you yeah. remember if your surgery was laparoscopic or open? It was open. Open. Yeah. Okay. And did, and how was it? Because a lot of a lot of stuff has changed, I'm sure, as far as like recovery from that surgery protocol, right? All that. Yeah. How long were you in the hospital? And did you have a feeding tube? And were you oh, able to eat a feeding tube? So I was in the hospital for two weeks, um, and then like last minute before I went into surgery, um, my surgeon was like you should consider getting like the J genome tube, the J tube, um, mm -hmm. where it goes just directly into the intestine because he was like, if you can't eat, you're gonna have to be awake and they're gonna shove a tube down your throat to eat and all this stuff. Um, so I was just, I just like, I was like, yeah, it sounds like the best idea because that really doesn't sound fun <laughs> to get right. a feed, you know? Um, so yeah, we decided that last minute and then the two weeks went okay. And then kind of by the end of it, I went and stayed with my mom um, cause she's an RN. So she helped me through all of it. <laughs> she knew what was going on. And um, then I just got 
like after I got home, I just didn't feel good. Um, and I was actually like throwing up bile and mm. I had really, really bad gas pains and all this stuff. And, uh, they were like, just walk it off. Um, take like <laughs> depository and try and go to the bathroom. And I was like, I, I can't sit. I can't stand. I can't lay down. I can't walk. I can't. Oh my God. It was like, I remember just being in my mom's basement. Um, and like, cause she had the extra room down there. And I was like this, like walking on her treadmill, just like trying oh. to get, it oh, and I was still on the feeding tube, but I, I was like eating softer foods, like, um, mashed potatoes. And mm -hmm. I was eating like spoonfuls of peanut butter too. <laughs> cause I was like, the only good thing that I could like eat and tolerate. And then I, then I think I was home for a four, maybe four days. And, uh, I threw up about like, maybe like a cup or so of bile. And so my mom was like, heck no, we're driving, we're going. So yeah. we live about like, yeah, like 30 minutes from there. So it was like, four o'clock in the morning I think it was and we drive down there and they take me into the emergency room and they had to uh they did x-rays I had to drink some like contrast stuff mm -hmm. uh, for them to see what's going on and they said that the j-tube was tangled around my intestines oh. so they had to go in and remove it um emergency so they had to reopen me up and oh. out yeah <laughs> wow did it tangle like did they put it in there tangled or did it tangle by itself? Oh, no. I don't. They said that it could happen. Like it happens with with the J-tubes, but it's like rare, I guess. Right. Wow. Like, you know, of having it. But well, thank uh, goodness your mom thought fast and got you in there. Yeah. Well, I was throwing it up a little bit, but then when I did a lot, she was like, oh, boy, like this isn't right. Like that's and it. It, it was bad. Like it came out my nose. It was horrible. And oh. so. They said that, yeah, it was tangled, and then I, it ended up I had gas in my liver um, and an inf almost an infection in my blood, like it was starting, um, and Ooh. then, yeah, just like everything that I was trying to eat was backing up, so it wasn't coming out. It was just, it was all getting tangled and backed up, so they took me off of it, and then after that, I felt great. Like, I felt it was a totally different feeling, like I could eat and I didn't feel nauseous like they had me on Zofran before that and mm -hmm. I it was it was it was like life-changing before the life change you know? oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. I wonder if that's why they don't typically do feeding tubes now they've learned it's not necessary is the j-tube the one that goes into the yeah abdomen yeah so I had it yeah just like sticking out of my and were you, like using it to feed yourself yeah okay. yeah I had like these like shakes or liquid shake things and we it was it was like an iv bag like tube and yeah. i would add it on like a stick thing and it would just pump into it and wow, okay. like you just they they kept telling me too before i went in they were like just keep trying to eat or pump pump the food into you you'll feel better and my mom was like that was not a good no all while it's <laughs> tangled up in there wow. making it worse <laughs> yeah. Oh, <wow. laughs> yeah good so then after, that's what that's what you have to do listen to yourself if something yeah. doesn't feel right you go to the doctor yeah, yeah. I was when I was like sitting there and I was in pain and I just like I couldn't move sit stand sleep I couldn't do anything and it was I wasn't going to the bathroom and when I was throwing that up I was just like there's not something's not right like yeah right. Not right. <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh. So that fixed it though. You had that removed and then it was good. There was no infections in there no. from it? No, they gave, I think they did put me on like a little light antibiotic. And then I was in the hospital for, I think, a couple more days um, after that, just so they could watch me. But yeah. after that, yeah, I just went home and I was like, I will eat better at home. <laughs> I don't want hospital food. I don't want yeah. jello. I just want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. And so were you 18 when you had your surgery? Yeah. And you're 20, going to be 28. Seven and a half. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. So 10 years, just about 10 years ago. Yeah. I just celebrate, well, I guess celebrated my, uh, gastrectiversary or whatever you want to call it, um, mm -hmm. on November 5th. 
Okay, okay. good. Yeah, nine years. Oh my wow. goodness. So how are you doing today? Like how is eating for you now and your energy levels and everything yeah. like that? Besides three kids, my yeah. energy level is pretty good. <laughs> um, I did actually just have uh, iron infusions. My iron was pretty low. Um, and they think that's just from like the pregnancies over the years and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, um, I was anemic when I was pregnant with all three of them too. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, I've been doing really good and diet's good. And I've maintained like weight at like a hundred pounds. I mean, I'm only five, two. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not that, I'm not that big of a person, so. right. but, uh, yeah, I feel like I, it's not as much different. Like I, I really can eat anything yeah. and I can eat, I can clear a whole plate of food and, uh, I can eat two, three pieces of pizza. I can eat steak, salad. I can tolerate sugar pretty well. Good. Yeah. Are you That's having great. to eat all day long or do you typically eat with your family breakfast, lunch, and dinner and maybe a snack? I, yeah, I can usually go, I can usually do like three meals a day. Um, I can snack all day or I can, I can go kind of a while without it. I don't know if I just like train my body that way or I don't know. I just can I don't really feel like like the shakes I used to get um, when I would go long times without food and like snacking and stuff. So I used to like set my timers. <laughs> I used to be like, okay, I got to eat because I won't feel good if I don't eat. But now I light at the end of the tunnel for you. I'm sick of yeah. eating. I can't take it. I think I'm going to just start eating the three meals a day. To heck with it. <laughs> I don't know how I got, I guess I just kind of ate normal from before you know like kind of started off small portions at like breakfast I kind of don't eat breakfast I know that sounds bad because it when I wake up it just it I'm not ready to eat mm -hmm. <laughs> I get really sick I've noticed um for the past couple of years that when I eat right when I wake up yeah it I get so nauseous and <laughs> but if I wake up drink coffee and then I kind of ease myself into it, wake my body up and then eat something like oatmeal or whatever. But yeah, I can, I usually eat a plate or two of dinner. And so there is a light at the end of the tunnel, I promise. Oh, <laughs> do you like, since you're doing so well and you can eat normally, do you by chance like focus on getting organic foods or is that not anything that you look at? Yeah, I've I've tried to um, switch to organic food since having kids. Like, just going to have them eat healthier too, and right. um, it is pricey. Yeah, <laughs> I'm at Those home. Now. Husband is our only income, but um, yeah, so we we try as good as we can to get what we can organically. I shop at Costco; they have yeah. pretty good That's stuff. Cool. So, yeah, yeah. we uh, try and try and get all that but um I did have pro I do have problems with like dairy mm -hmm. um I haven't really I haven't really tried to like drink a glass of milk I don't really I've never really been like a milk drinker but right. almond milk seems to do great um I don't have a problem with that at all so yeah yeah everyone is so different when it comes yeah. to stuff it's so yeah. weird it is yeah some kind of correlate we gotta find something <laughs> how I want to know being 10 years out how I know you said that you just had your first was it your first iron infusion or did they give yeah. you some when you were pregnant no I just was on like prenatals with okay. um, iron um but yeah I and how are your other labs like and how do your bones look have you had a DEXA scan to see I how they're looking no, I haven't had one yet. Um, I was meeting with a couple of doctors just barely, um, and they said that they don't really suggest for me to get a DEXA scan yet, just because I'm so young. <laughs> I don't know. They they just said not to. Um, I am going for an MRI probably next month or the or January, whenever they call me back <laughs> to get in for that for like for the um all the breast cancer and all that stuff so kind of diving into that area now which is I think it's <laughs> to, honestly it's a little scarier than the stomach cancer for me I don't know okay. just as I'm kind of more of a thought process into it instead of like we need to get the stomach cancer done and over with where right. it's like the mastectomy I can like focus 
either test, keep testing, or just be done with it as well. So I don't know. That's kind you of have a history of it in your family? Um, I do on my mom's side, okay. but she was, the genetic counselor was saying that the, since it's not really prominent on my dad's side of where the CDH comes from, it's more of like a 40 to 60% chance still. Right. So yeah, they said to just start with the MRIs and then we'll go from there, I guess. <laughs> right. But, yeah, all so I suggest alternating with the MRI and mammogram. So every yeah. six months you're getting that testing. Yeah, that's what they told me. Um, so after this first one, I guess we'll, I don't yeah. know. They said we'll just, that we can talk about the mastectomy or keep testing like with the mammograms and MRIs and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, they told me my, uh, I didn't, I didn't really ask them about the, my calcium or they didn't tell me. So I guess no news. It's good news. But they told me my B12 was high, um, which is kind of odd, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for a little bit, my my B12 was low and I wasn't taking it. I actually had, um, I actually had two miscarriages because of that mm -hmm. between my first and my second pregnancy of my kids. Um, and uh, yeah, so now it's, it's good. And I was getting the shots every month, but I would, now I take the under the tongue ones mm -hmm. and they're just from Costco <laughs> and okay. they, and they, they were like, yeah, just take them like every week or every other day or every two days and see, we'll see how your levels go with that. But, and now yeah. they're high from that. Yeah. I so good. wow well that's better than getting a shot yeah way better <laughs> yeah, I was glad that those were absorbing because I was like I don't want to do the shots every month yeah. right no, that sounds it, terrible I didn't like it but yeah and my vitamin D is low too mm -hmm. um so I'm on I'm taking supplements for that too but you know yeah. normal stuff I guess with, <laughs> with right. all, all that so yeah, it's definitely ta individually tailored. It's a good idea to have yeah. your lab checked and just make sure everything's looking good. Yeah. So I want to delve into the the pregnancy. So were you, like, how many years out were you? Yeah, how many years out? And did the doctor say anything about it? Or were you nervous about getting pregnant? Were you just like, let's try it? Or what, what well, happened? <laughs> so me and my husband, we were, we've been together since we were, like, 14. <laughs> so my sister started having kids and then he was like, well, we should have a baby. And I was like, well, I don't know about that. Cause you know, like I just had my surgery. So I did have my daughter in August of 2016. So that's uh, three, three years three. out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was pretty soon after. And yeah, I was, I was pretty terrified. I was like, what if it just like doesn't go right or whatever. And I did want to lean towards like doing the IVF to, get rid of the gene and stuff but um I was just kind of like if if we go that route I don't know if we'll ever have kids because it's just so expensive to yeah. do that. but so yeah I don't know I kind of have some guilt with that <laughs> just because like I don't I hope I don't pass it on to my kids but I yeah know. Um, our fears. when I had her I was like 21 20 21 okay. and then uh she was about three two she was two and uh we we got accidentally pregnant again and then uh, <laughs> yeah I, I lost that one and that one was really really early um and then they were like checking my levels and all that stuff and they were like yeah you're like all the stuff for pregnancy hormones are low and um the h hg is it hgc hgc levels are yes. low um, and the B12 is low. So they, they were like, we just suggest you like get that up and all mm -hmm. this stuff. So then we tried again. Um, and then I had, I got pregnant and we went and I, I was doing fine. And then at like 10 weeks, um, I lost it. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, I don't know if we want to try again. So okay. I kind of focused Perfect. on like getting healthy and getting better and, uh, getting my levels back up for the B12. And then once I was doing the shots for like, I think it was like two or three months. I uh, actually, I think it was about, it was about four months. Then we uh, tried again. And then I had 
I got pregnant with my son. So, Yay. Yeah. so positive from that. <laughs> Double. Yes. Yeah. So tell us how your pregnancy were pregnancies were. Did you have morning sickness or did you feel good? I did. Did you I eat? Did. Um, but the nice thing is, is I never threw up. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. I hate throwing up and I haven't thrown up for nine years so it was it was good but I uh yeah I, I was super nauseous um before I found out I was pregnant and I was like well this is kind of weird like I wonder <laughs> you know I was curious and then yeah I was so um and I got car sick in the car and I was just like I am so nauseous and I never get car sick in the car like oh. I can take trips for hours and I'd be fine and I was like so so nauseous like I was like we have to pull over like and we would just drive like not even that far <laughs> like yeah. in the car and I'd be like nope <laughs> and then uh yeah they it's funny because my my doctor um that I've had through all of my pregnancies um my OBGYN he he was like he's a high risk um doctor or for the pregnancies and uh he told me that my pregnancy was a textbook pregnancy, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah, you think there'd be more, more good. to it. I had so all so you were all like, of them. You all were, of them were just, just normal, mm -hmm. like the morning sickness for the first trimester. And then, and you didn't like go early with any, any of them or anything? The only one I went early with was my son. I was like three weeks early with him, but... Yeah, and that was that was about it. Oh so. my gosh, that's a, so that's fabulous news. Too. Yeah. Was it early, no, no, like naturally great. early, or did they induce you early? No, it was just naturally early. Yeah, wow. I'm not sure why? Um, but he just, I guess, he just wanted to come early. <laughs> and he, having the delivery, you didn't have problems with blood no. sugar and not eating during all of that. And no, surprisingly, not. Um, I think the IV helped. Um, I did have epidurals, um, with them all. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember like really feeling like hungry. I know that I was like super, super, super nervous. Cause you know, childbirth is, is scary in itself. So I think I was like more focused on that than like eating at the time. But yeah, yeah I, do you, I, do you I, feel I, hunger? I do actually. <laughs> I always feel hungry. I'm like, I'm always like, we eat and then like two hours later I'm like I'm hungry I can eat, <laughs> I can eat anything it's fine for you yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's funny because my sister who's negative she's like she was or negative for the genes she's taller than me and she's like you're my big little sister you know like you're smaller than me yeah. she's like but it you can eat more than me and I was like <laughs> yeah, I can <laughs> that's like you know it is yeah I used to eat way yeah. more volume. It's crazy how, how much you can eat. And, like, I don't know. It's funny to see that. And everybody's always like, you need to eat more. I'm like, oh, trust me, I do. <laughs> I <eat> <laughs> <laughs> Did you breastfeed your babies? Yeah, I, was too. Um, I didn't with my first. Um, she, she was stubborn and would not breastfeed. And later on, I, uh, she had some lip tie and tongue tie that I – didn't know about and wasn't really educated about. Um, and then, yes, I, I did breastfeed my, my two sons. Um, I only did it for about three months and on each of them. And I don't know, like at the three month mark, my milk just like it stop. wouldn't. Yeah. It just would stop. Like, I don't know if it was just my body. Like you can't keep up with how much he needs to drink, you know? And I didn't want to like, make myself sick you know mm -hmm. right which yeah and I was just like I don't want to be unhealthy just to you know give him you know my yeah, milk you need right. your strength and energy right. they need their mama care care of. Yeah. Yeah. Care of yeah so I was like there's no way I can keep going so uh, I a lot of people told me to just keep like pumping and then maybe that would help but I was just like I just don't I don't know. It's one. It's a lot of work. It is so much work to breastfeed, and I, I didn't really think that when I when I had him, my second, and I was like, I was all for it, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. But the three months was was good enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's perfect. 
but I got to experience it, especially um, with having maybe the mastectomy later on, you know, it's kind of, I'm glad I got to experience it for sure. Oh, no. right. Are you guys going to have more kids? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of traumatized for my last one. I did have a C-section with him. I had an emergency C-section with him. Um, but that had nothing to do with the total gastrectomy. It was just that uh, placenta previa or previa. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was just like detaching and they couldn't find his heart rate. And uh, he, That's scary. Yeah, they're like flipping me around. And then they're like, well, if we can't find his heartbeat, we got to go. And I was like, oh, please. Oh. No. Here. And then yeah, we just they popped up the sides and wheeled me in and yeah, it was terrifying. <laughs> was that that was the three that's the one that was three weeks early? No, no that was actually that, he he was only like a week early. Okay. Yeah, he was due June third and he came May twenty fifth. Okay. So yeah, he wasn't early at all. They I actually went into labor and delivery and I told them I was like, I'm in labor, but like I really wasn't in labor. Yeah. I just, wanted to get him out but I was like having contractions um and then they took me up and they're like yeah you're in labor and I was like oh okay well <laughs> <laughs> that's a good so, thing I came in <laughs> yeah I'm I'm glad I came in because my doctor was like it would have been worse if you if you would have waited it could have he could have like had no heartbeat if you kept oh waiting oh my gosh no. there yeah, you he go listen to your body right yeah I Oh my gosh, right. especially when you have a baby in there. It's crazy. <laughs> it's hard to have babies. It <laughs> is. Yeah, so we, don't worry. we want one more. I don't feel like our family's complete yet, but I'm kind of scared to yeah. have another one. I haven't really talked it over with like my OB yet or anything. Yeah. <laughs> we know that you can like, have a vaginal birth after C-section. I had two C-sections. Yeah, the, I, I have... I've kind of played, yeah, with the idea. So I don't know. <laughs> Your yeah. kids are so stinking cute. Oh, They're so oh. cute. Oh, my gosh. And they did that cute reel with your husband that you've been oh, yeah. with since you're 14. Oh. <laughs> I love it. So he was obviously really supportive. Like, you were with him when you had your gastrectomy. Was yeah. he yeah. all for it? Like, Yeah, he he stuck around. He, he wasn't going anywhere, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh, cool. A very successful story. It is. Yeah. I love it. It is. <laughs> you look incredible. You're you know. so healthy. I you know. have like a glow to you. <laughs> and your hair is so long and beautiful. <laughs> been growing it out. I cut it off uh, last summer. So I've been growing it since then. <laughs> is it thick? Do you have thick hair? I do. I actually have it. <laughs> I actually have it clipped up because it's like super. Oh it's yeah, it's really pretty and thick. Oh, yeah, it is. Did it? Did you lose any of it after your gastrectomy? I did or a little. Um, I think I lost more hair um, with uh, postpartum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Each yeah. time after my postpartum, uh, it was like for six months straight, and my hair was just like clumps. Right, you it, go like this, and it's like half of it comes out. And brush it. I just like let my hair do its thing because I could even brush it without it coming out <laughs> everywhere. It was bad. But <laughs> I'm glad. That's the yeah. one thing I got postpartum. I could deal with everything else, but the hair loss I can't. <laughs> oh, it's so awful. <laughs> so now that you're um nearly ten years out, what is what is the um maintenance for you? You said you got your labs checked recently. Is that just an annual thing you're doing now? Um yeah, they kind of suggested it. Um, they said like maybe every like six months or so. Um, once I get once I now I have my iron up. Um, I think they're gonna check it again in January. Um, when I go back to my internal medicine doctor. Um, which is funny because I, I didn't I didn't get set up with any doctors after my surgery. Um, I have I like like just recently had my like doctors I met with a medical oncologist and an internal medicine and a, a breast cancer genetics specialist um just recently um 
but yeah, they didn't really like set me up with a nutritionist or dietitian or anything like that after surgery, which I find kind of odd now that I look back, I was like, I should have, should have jumped on that. But I guess with, I don't know, with being pregnant, like so soon after, I feel like, honestly, it helped me. Like it helped me like get to the doctor, obviously, and they <laughs> walk by levels, um, but like gain weight too. It actually really helped me gain weight. And I think the heaviest that I was, um, was with my third son, I was like 120 pounds. So and That's then I, I obviously lost it. But yeah, I, I did, I gained a lot of weight. And then I just kind of stayed at one weight. And yeah, they told me to just, I don't know, they just said, I seem healthy. And everything seems to be going good besides just like those iron levels and vitamin D and all that. So yeah. All right. Yeah. You were telling me that they didn't even have you taking vitamins in the beginning. Yeah, they didn't. I ha I was on, um, like I had like those bariatric vitamins, like those really big chalky ones. And I was taking those for a little bit. And then, um, once I got pregnant, they just had me on like prenatals. So I just took prenatals plus iron for a while, like a really long time. <laughs> I was they, didn't have, they didn't have you taking any calcium the calcium citrate I was on some calcium yeah um, oh, okay I don't know they haven't really dove into that with me I I don't know I need to ask them about that next time because yeah it's yeah. important for your bones yeah definitely yeah yeah um well so do you so you're I think you're the furthest out that we've talked too. I think so too. Yeah. So do you have any like closing words of wisdom or advice that you want to offer to those that are looking towards doing this? Yeah, you are very wise. Yeah. <laughs> Years of gastrectomy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like you said, like, listen to your body. You know, if you feel like if you I don't know, I guess if you just have intuition of I need to get it done. I need to get it looked at. Or if you feel like your history is kind of iffy, I mm -hmm. would, I would go get tested because you never know. You never know. Yeah. I think we're going to find more and more people that carry this mutation with all the testing that's happening. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's crazy how many people have the CDH one and, uh, I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> like when I, when I first found out, I was like, well, there's probably like nobody out there. And I only like a three years ago, maybe I found the, all the groups on mm -hmm. Facebook and stuff. Like, um, I didn't have, I didn't have any of that when I, uh, went through my surgery. I, it was just me and my family, like, oh my <laughs> and, the, gosh. And, like and the doctors told us I did, um, have the, founder I think it was I think her name is Becky or Bethany I can't remember but she was the founder of the no stomach for cancer dot org and she was actually like in contact with my mom um, and uh, yeah that she she was like giving my mom all these like pointers and like tips that's not Karen is it Karen? or maybe Karen was it yeah. Karen yeah I was like I can't remember what her name was <laughs> yeah so she was um she was messaging my mom she talked to me on the phone um oh we love after, Karen we do so love much. Karen yeah. Yeah. Really, really awesome she was like telling me what she ate and um all this stuff like yeah she helped me a lot so oh. that was kind of really my only like person that I your could link like, yeah that I was like yeah. oh, okay I'm not alone you know and then yeah. I Facebook and find these groups and there's just like so many people and I was just like so, amazed how many people there is. Have you met anybody in, in real life? I haven't but um my doctor that I just met with yesterday she said that there's five other people in Utah that have the CDH1 gene mm -hmm. and I was like I gotta figure out how to get a hold of them. <laughs> so right I one I of them is our cousin our nope. distant cousin. One of them is our oh, distant cousin. She goes to hunt. Well, actually, there's two people because now there's. Oh, right. Oh, we, we have, have two we have family niece. members. In we have a niece there and we have a distant cousin. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Well, if you want, you can send them my information. I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we will. I'd love to meet 
with other people like I just think it's cool I know yeah. it is yeah. we're sort of like a weird family you know right. like a, a, what do you like, call a deranged family right? we, all, we all have each other's backs yeah. right <laughs> we're the only people that understand exactly what it feels like to have that sort of um that news put on you so it's true yeah and right. as seen it was like <laughs> it was I like know. a face you know you're just kind of like your whole so life was ahead of you and you didn't know I was gonna affect you yeah definitely it and I was actually going I was going to school online to be I don't know I just like chose a major I was gonna go be like a psychologist that's not what I want to do anymore but yeah I uh, was doing online school during my gastrectomy and I just remember my mom coming to the hospital and we were like studying and like reading on all the stuff that was going on and, uh, that I needed to study for and then yeah. they, I was I told her I was like I don't think I can do this right now so I kind of put it off for a little bit and then became a mom and well I did get a job after that and then I quit my job to be a stay at home mom. So <laughs> that's a, that's an important, big, hard job. Yes. <laughs> I do it too. Yeah. So do you. We I all, we're all stay at home moms. <laughs> it's worth it though. It It's, it's, it's good. I, I love my kids there. They all have their own quirks and <laughs> you know, they're all just, they're good. Yeah. I love oh, it. Good. Yeah. Oh. I'm so happy that well, you, you yes. experienced motherhood and yeah. you're thriving and you're healthy yes. and it's just very positive and reassuring to hear. So yes. you're providing a lot of hope for so many out there. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. much. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm so information because when I was young, I, yeah, like I said, I didn't have anybody to turn to really. So I'm, I'm glad I can be a voice. Yes. Yeah. And you yeah. Are. So we appreciate it. And there's also Thad in Utah. I was just thinking, right? Well, he's in California. Well, he's in Utah sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll keep, we'll put you in contact with him. And yeah. Love that. <laughs> well, thank well, you Demi, so thank much. Thank you Demi. so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We have a wonderful it. Thanksgiving with your family. Oh, you. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.